Oh, hello and welcome to Furious Driving. And this, as you probably know, is my old blue Mercedes W123 230E, the fuel-injected 1983 behemoth of rust. Now, this hopefully, fingers crossed, will be the last time I wheel this out and take an angle grinder to the floor and crack out the welder. Because as far as I know, fingers crossed, to find some wood to touch or something, all the lucky dip things, uh, this big hole just here, and it's quite a big hole, as we said, is the last patch of rust remaining in the floor of this car. After this, I can pack up the welder and start working on the brakes. So the next time I roll it back out the drive, I'm not having to stop it on a block of wood. I can actually hit the pedal. That would be nice. Right, so let's get the wheel off, get it in the air and go from there. I've got to say, even though it's a bit sunny, it is bitterly cold today. I think it's below five degrees and it is just horrible. I've got thermal socks, two t-shirts, a shirt and a jumper and my fleece on. And I am already shivering. And I've only been out here about four minutes. Snow is forecast, so when I get it done, before I put the cover back over it tonight. So the wheel's off, I've put an axle stand underneath the bottom of the shock absorber. So if the floor collapses underneath the jack, um, around it in fact, then we won't get squished. So let's look inside here. This is pretty awful to be perfectly honest. It's crumbling up, crumbling up, crumbling up, crumbling up, all the way up there. And as we come around here, it's uh, pretty terrible up there as well. I knew it was bad around here, but I didn't realize quite how bad it was up inside there as well. This is quite a lot more work than I was expecting. Uh, I better get the grinder out and get going. Now in the last episode, some people did point out I'd left off like an inside fillety bit uh, behind there. Um, not particularly concerned because I'm never going to use this jacking point. I'm only ever going to use the floor jacking point and it's quite strong underneath there with lots of very thick metal all around it. Now fortunately I've got these really handy little magnetic torches which are so handy for just clamping into places up, or awkward places really, and you can see what you're doing then. There are Amazon links to those below the video um, it's an associate link, Amazon Associate, so if you buy that, I get a few pennies and it helps fund the channel. It's interesting, there were several, uh, four or five of these uh, wax injection points where the thing was rust proofed I guess some point when it was new but it really hasn't done a great deal of good because it has crusted the entire perimeter of the wheel arch. I've just spent the last few minutes taking it back to well finding where the metal starts around this side. My god this is just terrible. This really is not a pretty sight. This is more than a day's work I think. Right, so after quite a while of grinding and actually getting a little bit bored of grinding, I noticed there was, uh, well, some bare metal just here. It wasn't even a hole, it was just bare metal with a big flap of underseal. So I thought, oh, wouldn't it be quite handy to just take that back to metal so I can paint that, get a lead on that one before it starts rusting anymore. Put the grinder on it and look what happened. This is through to the side of, is that the petrol tank just through there? Or is that the side of the boot? It's green, hang on, it's got a torch on it. It's the original factory green. Um, so yeah, good news. Great to find more holes in the car. Always extremely good, especially when it's so close to a mounting point for the suspension. It's only a stabiliser bar, but even so, all good fun. Now I'll also say, people have been saying I needed to take out the seats inside the car um, before I started welding up this side. I don't think I do because these are not um, folding seats. So I'm looking basically at the back of a sheet of metal, which is the bulkhead of the car, rather than the back of the seat. So I don't think I'll need to be taking the seats out, which I was gonna be doing, but no longer think I need to. This is so much not fun. Oh, that's more here. Oh, straight through again. Damn it. 
it's gone up my sleeve. Oh. I really wish I kept that yellow one instead of this one. Oh dear me. Right, well, I've been a bit more busy and guess what? I've found even more holes. This was actually completely full of silt, believe it or not. There was just a really tiny slit and all the mud had collected it, gone in through there, built up and then rotted out through here. This is again, quite close to the suspension components. So we are, yeah, gonna have to deal with this quite carefully. Um, this hasn't got any bigger than I thought it might do. I've just buzzed a little more around here. So it's coming around the bottom, so you can see I've excavated so far a big hole just there. I've got a feeling if I keep going, this entire end is going to be, basically this, this wing is going to fall off pretty much. <laughs> and then I've got this patch here to excavate. But first of all, I've just noticed this patch of rusty coloured stuff just here. So I'm going to get the grinder up onto that. Well, guess what? It gets better and better. I thought I'd just start skimming off this surface rust on the wheel arch, because it's a bit unsightly. I'll put some rust proof paint on it just to keep it nice, because it like, might actually snow tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. Saw a little bubble down here, and guess what? It has been filled with filler in the past. So someone has bodged a repair on this at some point in the car's history. A bit more rust just there. A lot of rust just there. I'm going to take the grinder to all of this and see really how bad this quarter of the car is. I'm pretty sure Mercedes-Benz didn't put that much filler on the outside of their cars when they were making them. They didn't put that many holes in it either. I have to take it all off though because as it comes back you do find just the beginnings of surface rust underneath there and you can't leave that on it. Seems like this entire wing has just been fillered everywhere, just skimmed with filler. I don't know why though, because the lineup with the door is fine without it. Oh yeah, I do see, I do see. It's had a new arch lip on it. You can see where the weld is now. That's where it started to go. So it's gone through really badly. And I don't know if it's been done with, oh, I don't know, where they just put a new outer over old rust and that's what's rusted out so badly. If they did chop it out, but didn't chop it out very well, or oh, what? But yeah, this is where it's all come from. This is a new, a new outer lip that's been put on there and it's gone again. And you can see here up at the top of the, uh, there's a bubble up here. There's a hole there as well. There's a lot more of this than I thought there would be. Well, guess what? There's more. All along here, as I suspected, is as frilly as, I don't know, a pair of old lacy pants or something. It's completely gone all up in this corner here. This is gone totally up inside there. Um, yeah, there's not really any more rust than that and that on the wing itself. But yeah, lots and lots of plating and cutting to do. It is so cold, I'm not sure what I'm gonna to do today. So, once again, this old thing has thrown me a curve ball with way more than anticipated levels of corrosion and problems I wasn't expecting. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I mean, I have seen rustier cars than this that will get restored. In fact, bear with me for a couple of days and you might see one on the channel very soon indeed. Spoiler, sweetie. Um, but yeah, this is quite a lot more rusty than I was expecting. I thought I'd have a bit of a 
grind and a cut session and then a bit of a weldy session and be done by, well, by tea time basically. This is not going to happen. This is several days worth of welding. And in fact, having now seen this and the way it's all gone completely on the inside, I might actually go and see what repair panels are available for a carry-on, um, whether it's better to go and get a complete new lower wing section or something. I don't know, it might be a better move because that is bent and corroded on that corner as well. Everywhere I go, I find more damage and more rust. So yes, this is a bit of an issue. So I'm gonna leave it for today because also as well as not knowing if I need to buy some repair panels, um, it's bitterly, bitterly cold. Um, it's like below five degrees. And I've just discovered that the Alpha 145 MOT is due in two days time. Um, and it is a new battery and the horn still doesn't work. So I need to go and sort that out as well. But, I mean, you could look at this and say, oh my God, this is time to call it a day on this project, but I've come a long way on it. And basically, it's just a matter of just zapping bits of metal over, or cutting back to good metal and zapping bits of new metal in there. So we can do it. It's not, not a write-off just yet. Oh well. Right, so if, I hope you've enjoyed this. And if you have, please do hit like and subscribe. Yeah, take joy in my pain, you cruel, sadistic people. Uh, meanwhile, I'm gonna go whimper into a cup of tea and uh, yeah, and try and thaw out for a bit. Yeah, see you next time. <laughs>